In this Inspired Insert.com interview, this portion is called the Bucket List Series. This is where I have past interviewees come on, people who they said is on their bucket list, usually other high-level entrepreneurs, and I allow them to come on at the end of my interview to ask a few questions to their heroes. In this case, we have Dustin Maher and Tony Horton of P90X. Listen to what he asked, that and much more coming up now. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have a legend of fitness. Tony Horton is the master behind the best-selling fitness program, P90X. They've helped millions get fit. Uh, let me, <laughs> I'm going to bring the guest on one second. You know, one of the things that I write on my questionnaire is who are, who's on your bucket list? You didn't choose Oprah, you didn't choose a president, but you chose Tony Horton. So I wanted to have you and, and have on and uh, have your way and uh, chat and ask your questions that you have. Tony, I appreciate you uh, indulging in this. Not a problem, Dustin, how so, are you? Dustin, tell me a little bit about you and I know you have a few questions. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thanks, Tony, for uh, doing this and I uh, definitely look up to you. Um, I've got a program, a, a movement I consider called Fit Moms for Life and uh, kind of known as America's Trainer to the Moms. And with that, uh, I've uh, worked with about 5,000 uh, clients in person and then about 15 to 20,000 through my DVDs and various, uh, various things. So I um, really look up to you as an inspiration, not only from a, a business standpoint, but also from a fitness standpoint. I'm 30 now. And just what you've done to really inspire, you know, the world to to be healthier. And you know, so many of my clients have P90X and Ten Minute Trainer and all those, you know, great programs. So, I uh, just really respect you a lot, and, and super excited to to be on with you. So, what are your? You had a few questions. I yeah. know Tony, you have what, like four minutes, five minutes, right? So, yeah. Sure. Okay. So yeah, my, my first question is kind of what is it like, you know, working with Beachbody, the pros and the cons to it? You know, do you have to sign your life away or do you have freedom to do other things? Well, well I love it. I mean, it's completely changed my life working with this company that's grown so far so fast. I mean, uh, it seems like, my, you know, when I look back at the last, I don't know, how many years, 16 years, um, a lot has a lot has happened, you know, and and I think the positive things are pretty obvious. You, know, you look at the products we've created together, and and without them, I would have never had that opportunity. Right. Without them, I wouldn't have these those other opportunities. I wouldn't be able, you know, nobody would know Tony Horton from Adam. So, uh, I wouldn't have these opportunities with Seven Eleven and and this clothing company, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to meet the folks at Harper Collins and written these books. And so, you know, it's just, it's not only improved my lifestyle and allowed me to have access uh, to, to really amazing experiences, but it's opened up other doors as well. And, and that's really been pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I would say some of the cons are, you know, when you get to this point, you know, you feel like Paul McCartney and the Beatles, you want to kind of break up with the band and go on your own. Um, because, you know, there are certain restrict restrictions within my contract, which are there to protect not only them, but protect me. But there's a lot of things that I can't do because, you know, I, I can't, you know, you can't play for the Green Bay Packers and, and uh, uh, you know, the New York Jets. you got to stick with one team, so you can't compete against yourself. Yep. So, you know, but the, but the great thing about Beachbody is they've opened up categories like food, like, like fashion, um, like book writing. And, uh, and so in the meantime, I do everything I can with them uh, and, and try to, you know, um, be able to you know, adhere to the restrictions of that contract. And, and build these different products and still be able to go off on my own. And in a certain res in a certain way, it's probably good because there aren't enough hours in the day to be able to, you know, do a lot of the things that I've been offered lately. Right. Cool. So I've got two more questions. I know time is tight. So I'm obsessed with creating communities. That's what I believe is is how we're going to change the, the future of our culture and that change the conversation we're having um, in our homes, schools, churches. And so I've created a lot of groups around the country. We've got about 105 Fit Mom for Life groups. Um, everywhere around North America right now, and our goal is to have fourteen thousand, which is one for every McDonald's in America. That's kind of our our three to five year plan. 
and we just find you know women in the community that are, are looking to to start a group up. But so my question is, kind of, what do you think about that from a community standpoint? Do you think it is one of the most important things to kind of change the way our our culture and America and the world is is you know living today? And uh, and how are you planning on doing that? Obviously, Beachbody has their Beachbody coaches and different avenues, but I would just be curious to hear your opinion on that. I, I think you're right on track, Dustin. I, I think it's critical. You know, I think a lot of people are becoming de so detached um, that it's becoming more and more difficult uh, for people to sort of maintain and sustain their health and wellness. Um, so I, I would say you're spot on, you know, trying to create as many communities. Uh, cur creating communities creates accountability and it creates purpose. And, and when you've got a, a group of like-minded people in a room, you, you can really change the world. And I think you're, you're spot on. It's funny that you use the word fit mob. You know, I was, uh, I was in the early stages of uh, creating uh, an app called Fit Mob. I don't know if that's that fit, fit Moms or Fit Mob. Moms, Fit Moms, Fit yeah, Mob. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I think it's wonderful. You know, it really is. It's a great idea. I think you found a, a beautiful niche, and it sounds to me you've had some great success. And so, uh, no, I would not deter you in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I would not have you stray from that formula. I think creating those communities is great. It gets people away from the screen and their and their and their phones and their TVs and it gets them out and about you know I mean I I try to do that with things as simple as getting together with some friends and doing these dance lessons which apparently I'm you know I'm gonna take I'm gonna try and get you on Dancing with the Stars I think that is your <laughs> next gig since a way to get come close to that one I was asked a while back or there was early talk of it and after these few lessons I discovered that was a horrible idea so. And Tony, we've got a lot of uh, mutual friends together someone like Joe Polish for example there's uh, I'm in his, his group and a lot of different groups that we have a lot of uh, a lot of mutual mutual friends and people. So hopefully someday I'll get to meet you in person. So my last my last question for you is kind of you know with P90X and stuff we've kind of rode this DVD wave. I've ridden it in a in a much smaller version than you did. And you know where do you see it going from here? Obviously technology, mobile, you know making things as convenient as possible, which I think is where things are going and. My my belief is you know with the communities and trying to pair both together to create experiences. But where do you kind of see you know Beachbody yourself, your own brand going to really try to again change the conversations we're having? Because I still don't believe that there's this tipping point yet in our culture. You know I see so much resistance with my clients. They're trying to eat healthier. They're trying to maybe drink less alcohol or whatever it may be, and they're getting such flack and crap from their friends. And it's still not cool nationally to to be fit and healthy and to say no to certain things. Well, you know, I think the future, I think it's changing. I think it's changing. Yep, absolutely. And I think companies like ours, uh, I think Beachbody is in the midst of, of trying to make that shift. I mean, the idea of somebody seeing an infomercial and then having to get on the phone to call somebody who might be in India somewhere and, and, and negotiate what to pay and for how much and, so, and then pay extra money to have that shipped you know, at a sooner period of time and then waiting for the mailman to deliver it so that you can open up the box, take out the disc and put it in a machine so you have to, you know, the you know, first part. That is so archaic. Yeah. I mean, streaming now. So we're working on that and I, you know, I, I, I make that email at least four times a week. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up because we got to be part of the future. We don't want to get caught behind the eight ball, right. you know. How do you, you know, the, the problem with Beachbody is we've got this coaching business and, you know, we have these challenge packs that the coaches, you know, try to promote to help build their businesses and share our, share our products with other people. If you're streaming a video, mm, how does the coach uh, manage to build their business and I'm not screw that up? And so yeah, yeah. it's a very, a very complicated equation, but we're working very hard on, on it. So, um, you know, and when it comes to training techniques, uh, if you look at it now, you know, look how much yoga has changed. You walk into a yoga class these days, it doesn't even look like yoga anymore. And I don't think it's a bad thing. There's a lot of traditionalists that feel like, oh, you know, where's the traditional hatha, ashtanga, yin type yoga? They still exist, but you have to understand that, you know, people want to add cardio to yoga. You can call it something else, but I, I don't think it's kind of silly to get upset about those types of things, you know. Um, and, and same thing with resistance. I mean, you look at core and functional fitness, you look at the popularity of, of, of P90X and CrossFit. You know, the idea here is, is to be excited about what you're doing. Uh, be okay with the fact that things are going to change, and that's probably a good thing. And and hopefully you've got the right instruction and motivation, um, so that you're not getting hurt. You know, there's a lot of people who right. are pushing the envelope who shouldn't be. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's all good. It's going to change. It has to change. And if you're not moving, if you're not changing, 
you're not reinventing yourself every once in a while, then you're gonna get you're gonna be stuck in the past. Yeah, yeah I feel like really the the shift too is gonna really come when it hurts people's pocketbooks more through insurance and through work, you know, work compensation or whatever. I think that's really when some of that change is gonna happen because people are gonna feel yeah. feel and, in their pockets. You know, the thing is, is that. Sure, there's going to be there's going to be pushback from members of your family and people at work and blah blah blah. People don't like to see you change. They're so used to seeing you a certain way. Right. And it's really comfortable for them to fit you in a, in a very easy, understandable box. <clears throat> and you know, I mean, you have to have the courage to, you know, tell them to f off. To be honest, you know, I mean, it, sorry to you know. Yeah, it's it, fine. But the, but you know, a great example is this girl Kathy. You know, she had tried everything. She's five foot three, two hundred twenty pounds, miserable. You know, taking a bus to work. No support from her husband. She bought P Power 90, did it three times. Did P90X, did it three times. We put her in an infomercial. She lost 100 plus pounds. She couldn't do a single push up at the beginning and could do 10 pull ups the day I met her. Wow. And she got grief every step of the way from almost everybody in her life. But somehow she knew deep inside of herself that it was the right thing to do because when she was done with that workout, she felt better about herself. Yeah. And so feeling better about herself was enough of a signal. To ignore all the all the chaff that was going on around her, and I, I mean, that takes a lot of courage. And so, you know, if, if you're listening to me, then you have to find that you have to find the power uh, to stick with it and understand that feeling that you have at the end of the workout is ten times more important, a thousand times more important than all the negativity that's coming at you from all your friends, coworkers. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Tony. I know you have to go. I appreciate your time, Dustin. Thank you very much. Thanks for making it happen, Steve Nash. Blake Griffin, Elon Musk, if you're listening, this man wants to train you. <laughs> Thanks for your hard work and what you're doing. You know, I can't do it alone, and it's great to have really smart, uh, thoughtful, uh, enthusiastic people like yourself uh, in the community, man. So keep up the good work, and, and pleasure chatting with you today. And Jeremy, same deal, man. I really enjoyed this uh, hour together, and, and I know there's some great information here that could help you. Shout out to Shauna as well. Thank you, Shauna. You made this and, happen. And Real quick, Tony. I just wanted to say that one of my my visions is to uh, to pack out uh, arenas for Fit Mom for Life rallies, and our first one we want to have Michelle Obama on it. But uh, I want you on there too, uh, as well. So I'm just going to throw that out there in the future. First lady, I've met her a couple of times. You know, she's such a good good person. Really looking to, you know, help people eat better and move on a regular basis. So yeah, yeah, I'd be glad to do it, my man. All right, we'll be in touch. Thank Jeff, you. My contact info, so I'm in. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you.